Hello there. I realize, I am a little late on this, but in my everlasting boredom I decided to benefit off of that dumb streaming subscription I pay for monthly and watched the most questionable thing I could find. Which, in this case, would be the show about a tanuki girl entering a city full of furries to find out why she suddenly became so fluffy. I'm joking of course. I actually had my eyes set on this for a long time because it's a show made by Trigger, which is one of my favorite Japanese animation studios. In the past decade, they were responsible for a lot of the most awesome moments to grace 2D animation and I hope it will continue that way in the future. Anyway, back to the show. As mentioned, the story takes place in an alternate universe where humans have coexisted with so-called beast men for millennia, but due to racial tensions between the species the latter recently moved into their own closed-off haven called Anima City, where they can live in peace. One day, a tanuki girl called Machiru decides to move there and from there on out it becomes a fun roller coaster ride full of awesome characters and zany events which eventually culminates in a classical fight the power climax that Trigger does so well. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about our main character. It was right around episode 5 when it first began. Some awesome shit had already been taken place so it was well overdue for a perfectly paced and animated comedy episode. So suddenly, this tanuki girl is playing baseball using her cool powers and a very primitive part in my brain awakes stating that this furry is actually kind of cute. Hold it. Don't spout another word. As per your request, I'm cutting you off in the very moment you attempt to start talking about anything that could be even remotely related to the topic of waifus. What the hell? When did I make that request? This doesn't at all sound like something I would propose. Silence. It is now that my time, the best girl Mothra's time, has come to take over in order to prevent any listening entities from witnessing the sexual preferences of a drawn anthropomorphic cat in an office chair. Don't be worried. I actually hacked the password to your account and watched the show as well, so I'm perfectly capable of giving an informed opinion. What was that about my password? Leave. Now. Alright fine. I guess I'll be heading off watching Great Pretender or something. But don't you even dare to finish without me. Splendid. Everything went according to plan. Like this, we can actually talk about the topic at hand. Brand new animal. Kitty Coos stated correctly, that the premise of this show is about Machiru, who enters Anima City for a purpose which cannot be stated without spoiling a few things. Alto Kitty Coos already slightly screwed up that part. I do not wish to do that, so I sadly cannot be as precise as I would like to be. This also applies to most of the show. Despite the short runtime of 12 episodes, BNA offers a multitude of different parties to partake in various shifting conflicts and motivations, which might not be entirely unpredictable but nonetheless are satisfying to discover. These parties include Ogami Shiro, a badass wolf who works as a social worker to beat the shit out of anyone who dares to disturb the peace in the city. There also is the Major Barbary Rose and Sylvester Allen, the head of an important pharmaceutical company. We further have Mike Iris' childhood friend Nazuna and a creepy dude named Boris, among others. As the plot moves along, we learn more and more about the political and social situation in Anima City as well as the darker side of this supposed utopia. Because ultimately, this society still consists of animals. Thus, the primary law are the rules of nature. And they run when the sun comes up. With their lives on the line. Alive, for a while. No choice, gotta follow the laws of the wild. Out here, only the strong survive. Mixed with religious themes in the latter half, by the end the show is able to explore a multitude of societal issues and ideas, while not forgetting that it is an action anime about fairies who beat each other to a bloody paste. Most importantly, the basic characteristics of Trigger are still present. Which means by the end, these characters who you grew attached to during the last few hours engage in an epic final battle that will make you raise your fists and scream with excitement, for the fight the power moment has arrived at last. And it is glorious as always. 
All that remains is pure satisfaction after witnessing a short but well thought through action show with beautiful animation which actually gives you some breathing room to think about its subject matter, for this is not jammed down your throat. Of course, it is not even close to perfect. A longer runtime could have made a significant difference on the world building and some characters, who clearly got less focus than others. Also, the numerous similarities to past trigger projects, especially Promare, tend to be a bit distracting. Like, it is not difficult whatsoever to guess correctly who the ultimate antagonist is going to be as well as the motivation and intention behind their evil deeds. This does not necessarily impact the show negatively in any huge capacity, however, I hope that in the future, Trigger tries stepping out of their comfort zone more often. It is not like they have not done that already. Nonetheless, BNA is still excellently crafted on a technical level and well worth the afternoon it takes to consume. Also, as a rare occasion, the OP of this show is actually really catchy and is not immediately skipped as a fundamental instinct with every new episode. Can I come back now? Yes. I actually have almost completed the required task. Wait what? You really already did say everything. What the hell am I supposed to do now? I do not care in the least. I enjoyed my time in the spotlight. Therefore it is time for me, the best girl Mothra, to take my leave. Goodbye, my love. Shit, I can't be mad at her. Anyway, let's wrap this up. You should watch BNA it's fun and exciting and a feast for the eyes. It's also infused with the underlying tone that make me love this studio so much. Which is that no matter what cards you are dealt in life, and no matter how many douchebags try to stand in your way, you can always climb up and overcome the odds because you're not willing to take anyone's shit. Your life is your own. Thus you fight the power. And you win.